Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Nat from Establish in 88. In honor of the 50th year of hip hop, Establish in 88 has curated monthly talks with those game changers in the music industry. Now, although we are a little bit late and past the month, but in honor of Women's History Month, 88 has sat down with some amazing women artists. These women and their artistry are about to change the game and definitely shake the block. So do me a favor, sit back, relax, and enjoy this chat. My name is Knowledge. I am a experienced curator. So I bring together artists um, into a space, help them develop their artistry and showcase them to the world. So I'm Allison, better known as Ali Allure. Um, I am a mobile esthetician. However, at night I am an erotic poetess, um, known as Erotic Whisperer. So what I do is I bring my audience um, into a sexual, seductive journey. Um, I story tell um, based off my experiences personally as well as business-wise. Um, and I pretty much intertwine all of that together um, to talk about what's going on in real life but just using sexuality. Um, so I'm deeply involved in today. I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. I think that music was created to be able to express yourself. Mm -hmm. It gives you a space where there should not be censorship. Because Absolutely. I'm telling you a story. Right? Mm -hmm. So in this space, whatever story comes out is my truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel about it. And not only is it about expressing yourself, but it's about different perspectives. Right. And so if there was only one way to go about something, everything would sound very monotone. Same, yeah. Which is kind of what the radio sounds like these days anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I am really appreciative of the indie scene and people not being so structured to, I have to make it this way, I have to create this way. Mm -hmm. um, and we can explore all the different perspectives of what music is really supposed to be. And I personally feel like, no, it's not too much. And, and what I do as far as being a poet, I don't use music a lot so as far mm -hmm. as like beats and things like that. Instrumentals maybe, but I feel like the story with like R&B artists and hip hop as well, everything kind of coincide. When I'm reciting my poetry, is literally just my word. So you have no choice but to listen to what I'm saying mm -hmm. and feel based off of how I'm expressing to you. Mm -hmm. So I talk about a lot of taboo conversations, but those taboo conversations is real life. So at mm -hmm. what point do you pretty much um, relate to everybody? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that, no, I don't think it's, it's too much. It's not enough if you ask me. That <laughs> relating is big. Yeah, relating is big because you don't, um, you don't know how much you have in common with somebody until yes. you open your mouth. A couple of days ago, I was on a radio interview, mm -hmm. um, and it was a man's radio uh, station. Mm -hmm. And before actually starting the interview, he asked me, "Are we going to be talking about your aesthetic services or your poetry services? Mm -hmm. I mean, your, you know, your poetry." And I said, "Both of them. Like they both go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean?" And as we started the conversation. It was more of like a misogynistic type of conversation. Mm -hmm. It was him always pinpointing sex, 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 sex. And although I am an erotic poet and I talk about sex, mm -hmm. I'm talking about real life stuff. You know right. what I mean? Um, and sex is a part of our making at this particular point. And I just feel like that was the most uncomfortable I've ever been. Although being uncomfortable speaking this freely in front of a room full of people, you know what I mean? Just this one little room I'm in and I'm speaking to this man and I'm literally listening to how you feel about women, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or how you view women and things of that nature. And I just feel like it's very, like you said, gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and at this point, um, you pretty much project your insecurities or people project their insecurities on us as black women. We already have a lot that we 
have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So with me expressing my truths through experiences or other people's experiences, and I'm telling these stories to relate to people, it's, it's frowned upon or it's just a, a disrespectful manner, in my opinion, yeah. when it comes to that particular situation. So Yeah, for sure. One thing that I've seen um, is in the journey of women in the industry, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's sad to say, but it almost always becomes hypersexualized. Yes, um, absolutely. And it makes me it makes me concerned for artists like myself or people who just want to be the quirky person or right. people who don't want to talk about sex at all. Mm -hmm. um, because there are so many other components to life, and they all entertain uh, intertwine together. Um, so yeah, I I think the the hard the hard part is staying true to yourself. Yeah, I, that, I completely agree with that. For me, I'm not so much sexual. You mm -hmm. know, I'm more so not to say tomboy, but I'm myself. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't want to be half naked on the camera. I don't want to talk about certain things mm -hmm. because of the music. The type of music I make is like I want people to be able to feel, mm -hmm. to relate to what I'm saying. So I agree. Um, I think it's the appeal also. Mm. Um, when you think about, especially women in music, mm -hmm. we've always been sexualized. Mm -hmm. No matter how early on or whatever, we've always been sexualized. Women have always been sexualized. So of course sex sales, of course numbers don't lie, but to eyes outside of women, that's men, that's what they see. Mm -hmm. So when you're going mainstream and you're having shows and you're doing all these things, they want that's what they want to see. So we give the people what they want. Mm -hmm. We give the people what they want. Right. And I wish it wasn't like that. Right. You know, because there are so many different personalities and so mm -hmm. many different ways that someone can express themselves, especially within music. That's it. But it's just like, because we have to give them what they want, it's like, okay, well, you have to do it this this certain way because this is exactly, this is the roadmap mm -hmm. of what has been put out before you. This is what we know will gain views. We will make a profit off of it. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, you never know what you can make a profit off of if yeah. you don't go outside of that. Yes, right. I really think Definitely. somewhere along the lines, the roadmap became the only way. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it was like, this is how, this is what we know will sell, mm -hmm. but it's like nothing else can sell. Mm -hmm. Which is not true. That's not true. Exactly. That's not true. Exactly. That's not true. Exactly. And then when you think about it too, we are in a male-dominated industry. industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when the men are um, hip hop or, or trap music or whatever the case is, who do they get to be in their videos? The girls, exactly. right? The girls that are in the videos are the ones with the implants, the lashes, the this, the that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? The whole making of what it's supposed to be like when you're in the music industry. Right. So then now as a female artist that's coming out, regardless of if you are R and B artist, a hip hop artist, a poet, a singer, you know what I mean? You have Janae Aiko, you got SZA, you got Jasmine Sullivan, Jill Scott, everybody. And then it's like now, okay, we have to pretty much put ourselves in the same category. You know, we we may not have the same type of idea or, you know, dominance as the males do, but at the end of the day, they have already shown what the women that they're interested in even putting their money into or right. seeing, you know what I mean? So now we're in comparison to that. And like you said, it's like we give the people what they want. Exactly. And this is what's already hot seat and this is what's already grabbing your attention. Well, let me grab your attention by doing what not not gonna say what everybody else is doing, mm -hmm. but, but you start with that and right. then try to maneuver your own little right flow. Of but then along the way, you end up losing yourself. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and you have to Never stay true to yourself. Right, you have to stay true to yourself. If you don't, then at that point, then you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Pretty much went inside of right. I've heard a lot of, of those stories of people who are like, I'm going to just do it this way. And, and then once I'm stuff. in, I'm going to give them what it is for yeah. real. Right. But then you end up stuck mm -hmm. in what they want. Right. Mm -hmm. And not to say that it's a bad thing because we all have choices. Mm -hmm. But to look at it in a different perspective, if I'm going into something that is my dream, that I want to do, that brings me joy because I'm helping other people 
I'm not going to go in with the mindset of I'm going to give these people what they want image wise. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come from a space where I know who I am. I know that I can create to give people what they want in my way mm -hmm. like, instead of doing what everyone else wants you to do. What else do you guys think the pressure comes from? Is it the labels? Is it the... I agree. And also, and also selling, the selling mm. soul type mm. of situation. Like, mm. if you want to get signed, then this is what you, you got to do. do. You got to do this. Mm -hmm. You got to look like this. And if you don't look like this, then you're not going to make it type mm. of thing. Which is why a lot of indie is. artists and independent, you know, um, independent artists and things like that. Because we don't, I want to do what I want to do. Right. right. And I'm going to create my own community of people that rock with me and mm -hmm. what I've got going on versus the masses. And, if it's meant to be, it was meant to be. It's meant to be. You know what I mean? And I feel like a lot more artists need to just dive in and hone in on mm -hmm. what they want to do, not what everybody else wants them to do right. type of thing. Right. I think we have to stop going after the money. That part. You know? Look Go for the art. Um, and be patient mm -hmm. with yeah. your craft yeah. and your community. Mm -hmm. um, because you are doing something that is going to be out of the norm. Yep. You have to give people time to receive you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah. That is true. Because it's taking a while for people to receive me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you won't. It's go, coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Because you are delivering a message mm. worldwide. And one thing, me personally, I wouldn't want to showcase authenticity while I'm doing my poetry or writing my poems. And then I'm lying in front of everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how the music industry is now. Like, so many people will put on the front to make it seem like they're this way. And it's like you really want to relate or you can relate, but you don't really know how to express that for real. So you're just going to say what you feel like people are going to gravitate to. Mm -hmm. And being authentic will allow more authenticity to surround you. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, that's how you pretty much differentiate what groups and rooms that you deserve to be in or yeah. should be in at that particular moment. You know what I mean? So me, I am an authentic person from my words that I say, how I deal with my clients. Everything is luxury top tier. Mm -hmm. So when I'm speaking in front of my my clients or I'm speaking in front of an audience, mm -hmm. um, whether it's young or old, it doesn't matter. I I'm delivering a message that shows you this is who I am. It's either you got to accept it or you're not. Definitely. I'm not going to give you a fairy tale just off of what you like to listen to. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you that option to either listen to me or not listen to me, but I know you're going to because real recognizes real. That's yeah. it. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that when you are your authentic self, especially within the industry that we are in, you give people the space to be authentic as well. Mm -hmm. You know, because people are gaining from you yeah. in, in every way. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't feel like it or you don't see it, being able to create something that others can relate to based off of the experiences and the things that you have gone through, mm -hmm. that is giving a person, no matter who they are, their age, whatever, that's giving them the space to be their authentic self because if you can do it, I can do it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I'd also say being authentic comes with recognizing where your power comes from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you have to know your mission for being here. Yeah. Um, and you have to know that it was given to you. The purpose was given to you. Um, when God puts a calling on your life, you don't. He's not telling everybody. Mm -hmm. He's not saying, this is the idea. Uh, anybody can take it. Yeah. No, he's saying, this This here is for you. This is your path. Are you going to take it or are you not? Right. So with that recognition, um, with walking in your purpose, I think that's where the authenticity comes from. Yeah. Too. I would have to say words. I believe that words are powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and not to give too much of myself away, true enough, that is something that I don't want to do. But... I also feel like, again, people gain. So being in a position that I'm in, making R&B and indie music, I feel as though I pour myself out. Mm -hmm. But in a way to where it's not giving too much, but it's allowing others to gain from my experiences. So you're gaining from what I'm saying, but I'm using words to where it, it's not, I'm not telling you my whole life. Right. And I'm not giving you too much, mm -hmm. but I'm giving you just enough to where you can relate and you can feel where I'm coming from. 
I I guess I'm working on the the balance of that actually because I I I want to be that thing under the microscope that everybody's like, huh? I wonder what this is, and everybody gives their different opinions and different interpretations. Um, I I want to be that open book, um, but I also want to create that container um, to where I can present myself in its fullness and still have the peace within and not feel like when it's time to go in that there's people in there with me right. and seeing what it's like yeah. to be in isolation. It's like we gotta. Um, that balance has to exist, um, but I do. I do want. I I I want people to know. Yeah. I want you to see my life in its totality, um, and and take it as art. Exactly. You know. Mm-hmm. I, I would I would agree. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm 100 percent balanced. <laughs> okay. I agree. Letting people know. Right. But since a young child, I've always been an open book. I've always yes. been about feelings and emotions. Mm-hmm. And I literally sit in them and I go through all of them. And then when I'm out of it, that is when I express myself. Like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, you know, as far as getting out of depression or mm-hmm. postpartum, you know what I mean? Because I have children. And I'm a writer. So I always, and I'm a communicator. I went to college for it as well, too. So I, I love to talk. I love to get different perspectives. I love when people not criticize, but give me constructive criticism mm-hmm. on certain things that I could do better. So not I don't put my entire business out, even when I'm speaking in my poetry. But because I am a people person and I am a service provider, I'm always trying to see how I can make people feel better. I'm a pleaser. So mm-hmm. I, I don't like when people don't like me or I don't like when people are upset with me. I want to know how I can always make people happy. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, that's where the yeah. the unbalance of mm-hmm. boundaries and you know things of that nature comes in because it's like, hmm. I probably told you too much, but it doesn't really matter because I wanted you to know that anyway. So I don't really know how to cut it off. And now with me doing poetry and because I'm sexualized and people are, women are sexualized. Now I'm finding it a little bit more difficult to create that boundary because people will come to me of all types of different walks of life Mm -hmm. with just that in the forefront. Not understanding that oh, I'm a professional. Like, right. Hold on. Like, right. We're, this is not is how it goes. You right. know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm very confident. I'm very comfortable in my craft and my art. However, I have to be stern. You know, mm-hmm. to let you know, like, this is not what we're not going here with that. Right. This is not the delivery that I'm actually delivering. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. And again, with being a poet, we all are poets. Honestly, it's just I don't have a beat. You know what I'm saying? To right. make it an actual song or, or anything like that. But right. with that even being said listening to my words and again that is what will allow me to either take something or not take something as far as the boundaries are concerned so that was a good question as a child like i've always been into music Mm -hmm. um just because music gets me in different moods Mm -hmm. um or helps me get out of a mood (laughs) if that is i could be honest um but I, like I said, I've always been a writer. I used to read encyclopedias with my grandfather all the time. Oh. So when we would watch television, you know, back in the day, we had 106 in Park. Um, we had like MTV jams and everything would come on. And mm-hmm. we would watch those. It, well, I would watch those, not him, but I would watch it. And just seeing how hype people would be off of it. Um, I think I was introduced to Tupac first, though. Mm-hmm. as far as a hip-hop artist because um, my grandfather loved him my brothers loved him and just listening to the words and he's a poet so listening to how he would flow and talk about his life and influence other people whether they agreed or they dis- didn't disagree it got the people going it got people talking and so that's what helped me a lot and then just like the the, the sounds of the beats and everything like that so yeah i was young i was maybe like seven eight as far as i can remember um as far as being introduced to hip hop, yeah. Hmm. I think um, I fell in love with hip hop around the age like five or six. Me and my sister, we had the, um, those radios you would plug up in the wall mm-hmm. with the two big speakers. And um, we weren't allowed to listen to like V103, mm-hmm. you know, those kind of stations because my dad was in the church when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, but we would sneak and listen, and, <laughs> you know, back in. Yeah. But we would sneak and listen, and um, I cannot remember which song or what artist it was, but I know that it was 
something about lit hearing the beat and then on top of the words that were being spoken and i'm so young so i'm not really understanding but somehow i'm having an understanding mm -hmm. and ever since then it's just been hip-hop r&b indie anything soul related mm -hmm. i can't get enough of it. i fell in love with hip-hop through my daddy Oh. Um, we would always ride in the car together and he knew every song that would come on the radio mm -hmm. um, and he was also the best at telling stories and that's why I became a great storyteller and so the two songs that I would make sure I would um, I would listen to the song on the radio whatever it would come on mm -hmm. I would try and like learn the words so the next time I was in the car with my dad I would be able to say it and he'd be like oh okay I see you right. but it was um, <laughs> children's story uh, by Slick Rick, mm -hmm. and then um, the that hip hop, the hippie, the Sugar mm -hmm. Hill game. Um, I remember the the part. Have you ever went over? Your friends has to eat, and the food just ain't no good. Okay. I had the whole thing done, and when I spit it for him, he was like, "Wow, okay." So then we started listening to people like Heavy D and Chub mm -hmm. Rock, and um, he was very big on um, expressive, positive music. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, I feel like that's what molded me in my artistry and with helping other people develop too. For me, the impact that I hope to have, aside from people being able to relate to where I'm coming from when I create, um, is to inspire others to just be themselves, mm -hmm. no matter what, no matter what situation, hardship, be yourself mm -hmm. because we came into this world on our own. Mm -hmm. We're going to leave this world on our own. Come on now. And we are all responsible for our own emotions. Mm -hmm. So regardless of how someone else feels about us, what you're doing in a certain way mm -hmm. or how you feel about something, those are your feelings. Yeah. That's how you do it. And so I just want to be able to inspire others to, to see that no matter what I'm going through or no matter how I feel about something, I am going to stay true to myself no matter how someone else feels about me or what I have to say or what I'm doing. I'm still my authentic self. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. I would agree. I would say my uh, the impact I hope to have uh, is to teach people that it's never too much. Mm -hmm. It's never too much. If you want to go there, go there. Do it. Do it scared. Do it do it nervous, do it broke, do it. Just mm -hmm. do it. And it's never too much. Someone is going to receive you, even if it's just you. Mm -hmm. Do it for you. Yeah. yeah. The impact that I wish to have is strictly confidence. Mm. Strictly confidence. Everything that I do, I'm confident 100%. Um, so just like you were saying, go big or go home, mm -hmm. and I don't care what anybody says about what it is that I do, because somebody loves me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not just me. God put this in my head to do it. It was like, here, hey, here's a platform. Go for it. And I want you to soar. So mm -hmm. that is what I pretty much put out there. Soar, whatever it is that you want to do. But make sure that you hold your head up when you do it, and you speak fluently and be authentic as well because that way you'll be placed in the rooms that you're supposed to be in you mm -hmm. know what I mean and we don't have to work hard for things like a lot of people are working harder and not smarter mm -hmm. so as long as you are confident what is for you will come to you mm -hmm. just because you are already open to receiving and accepting what's for you in yes. the first place so confidence is my main impact mm -hmm. I will want to partner with or collaborate with Jill Scott um and Beyonce. Jill Scott for poetry, Beyonce for performances. I feel like they're top of the line. Okay. That's good. I would have to agree with Jill Scott. I love Jill Scott. Um, but I also would want to experience Erica Badu. Mm. Mm. She gives me so much inspiration. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be a beautiful thing for me. Mm -hmm. If I could just, ex even if it's not us doing a song together, just being around, yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. being around the energy that she carries, just like you said, her confidence, and she is authentic to herself. Oh yeah, I she's feel like she's exactly, and I'm very very young, so she was around before I was even born. Mm -hmm. But it's just I relate so much to her authenticity. Mm -hmm. That's 
that those would be my top two. Okay. Um, I, I'm gonna keep Jill Scott in the mix over here. That is mother. Mm -hmm. Um, and I I feel like I could learn so much from her. But also uh, going a little outside the box here, uh, there is a performance artist named Marina Abramovich, and she um, in the '70s and '80s she explored the limits of her body and uh, her body in relationship to the world, in relationship to other people. Mm -hmm. um, and she did a lot of interesting projects that inspired me to um, look deeper into what I can present mm -hmm. to the world. Mm -hmm. um, not just through what my voice can do or what my actions can show, but what my heart translates. We will have our monthly vi uh, variety show and then again April 26th, and then again, May 3rd for our finale. So follow us, um, all my friends global. And then my personal, um, this, my personal page is a little different, um, but if you wanna see what I'm about, uh, my journey into discovering myself, um, you can also follow me at N-O-L-L-E-J underscore. Follow me on the Ali Allure underscore aesthetics. That is my business page. And to follow me personally to keep up with the shows, my Instagram is top dot one like the number priority. You can keep up with me on my Instagram. It's the Rennie Red. I have two shows coming up as well as um, I'm dropping my first album Ooh. April the twenty second, which is my birthday. Okay, hey, Taurus. Taurus. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Um, on the 15th, it's a pop-up shop. All of that information will be shared on my Instagram. Um, and then I have another show in May. Um, it is in Miami. It is for All Girls Pride. Um, it's called Magic City, Magic City Miami, I believe. Um, but again, all of that information will be on my Instagram as well. And I just recently signed to, um, it's a new and upcoming label based out of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So um, it's called 718MM Records. Um, they are currently looking for artists. So if y'all know anybody mm -hmm. who's looking to be signed for promotion and being able to book shows or whatever the case is, um, just let me know. Okay. Um, but it is new and upcoming. So yeah, that's what I have going on right now. Awesome.